Hello, welcome to the Bomb Shelter. I'm your host for this episode, Kevin Shum, and with me as always is my co-host, Jay McDowell. Viva! Yep. This time, uh, this is part two of our Marjo Madness uh, celebration. celebration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and our second movie is the 1977 major hit. Classic. Classic. Um, Viva Knievel. The first name in excitement, the one and only Evil Knievel, stars in his first motion picture, Viva Knievel. Evil Knievel. He puts his life on the line with every death-defying jump. Also starring Gene Kelly, Lauren Hutton, Red Buttons, Eric Olson. Dad, I'm Tommy, your son. Leslie Nielsen, Cameron Mitchell, Albert Salmi, Marjo Gordner. The chase is on, and the action never stops. Daredevil evil in a spectacular story of spine-tingling suspense. All right, and we're back. Um, that was the trailer for Viva Knievel from 1977. Um, if, if you can't tell from the title, it's an evil Knievel movie uh, and it, starring... And, and it is awesome. It is awesome. It's actually starring the real evil Knievel. As, as himself. Evil Knievel. Yes. <laughs> And it's, it's uh, well, we'll get to it, but it's a highly entertaining movie. I've seen it many, many times. It is times. such a fun movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's got, well, let's start with the uh, director and writers. Um, I'm so excited to get to the cast. I but, know. We just got to get to it. So the, the quote unquote director, which, and we'll talk more about this later on, is a guy named Gordon Douglas, who did several other fun movies the one i'm most familiar with is them from 1954 that's the giant ant movie under la yeah um he also did and i didn't want to list them all but he also did um some frank sinatra films and some elvis films so he was yep. fairly, fairly well known not not a not just a b movie guy didn't pull some guy off the street no. yeah um there are two writers uh antonio San Santian? Santian? Yeah, it looks like it. And I haven't seen any of his movies, but a really funny title <laughs> for one of his movies was called Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry. I, I have heard of that movie. Yeah, I've not okay. seen it, but I, I remember as a kid seeing it. Thinking, I, I got I worried. I see this. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked at him in an internet movie database because I got worried with the name like that. I'm like, is this some sort of like not safe for people <laughs> an adult movie? movie? But it wasn't. It's rated PG and it just sounds like a... Goofy. Yeah, I think it was kind of a heist movie or something like yeah, that. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but I it, think so. it seems like it. Um, Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry, which I was wondering is he, is Crazy Larry related in some way to the Amazing Larry? Amazing Larry. From <laughs> Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> um, also written by Norman Katkov, who did um, the Wild Wild West show from the 60s, uh, Mission Impossible from the 70s, and lots of other stuff. But mm. so fairly well known. Um, now to the fun part. Now the most most fun part. So, your your all star cast. Um, I'm I'm going to go in a different order than it's listed in most spots because this is Marjo Madness, and to us the most important per person in the movie, even a movie with Evil Evil Knievel, the most important person is Marjo Gordner. Well, okay, he's second most because it is Evil Knievel. It is Evil but Knievel. Okay, he is way up there. If Evil Knievel wasn't in the movie called Viva Knievel, then Marjo. Yeah, Gardner if it were called Viva Marjo. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a good movie. <laughs> but he plays uh, Jesse. And if you've listened to our previous podcast, which was part one of uh, Marjo Madness, Food of Gods, um, he's a, a fun star. I wouldn't say he's a major Hollywood star, but he's in a lot of really fun movies. Yeah. Um, he's, Food he's, of the Gods, Star Crash. Yeah. Uh, it, he's, he's known. He's... I would say he's well known. I mean, yeah. a lot of people know. Maybe not everybody, but yeah. definitely in our circles, they oh, yeah. would know who he Everyone is. Everyone knows who he is in our circles. Um, so then, of course, Evil Knievel is in the movie, pl playing himself. Um, Gene Kelly, yes, that, that Gene, Gene Kelly, Kelly <laughs> from Scene in the Rain. He's in it and plays an alcohol of alcohol of alcoholic. Alcoholic. Sorry, I'm really <laughs> tired. Um, absentee father. Uh, 
Yeah, absentee kind of, would be a good yeah good description. Um, named Will Atkins, and he's also uh, Evil Knievel's uh, tech. His yeah, he's, tech. he's sort of his mechanic, and uh, apparently, according to the movie, used to be sort of a stunt man, he's motorcycle rider. Kind of who Evil Knievel attributes. Yeah. Showing him all his moves, which we see later in the movie. Yeah. Apparently were not very good. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, another star, we've got Lauren Hut Hutton. Yes, that Lauren Hutton. That Lauren Hutton. As plays Kate Morgan, and she's sort of the love interest um in this movie for Evil Knievel. Um she's a photographer. Yeah. Um and, and kind of thorn in the side for a little bit. Yeah. They have an adversarial. Yeah, they don't get along at, at first, first, but yeah. Um, and she's in movies such as Gator, starring Burt Reynolds, and Once Bitten, which I don't think I've seen it. But that I was, uh, wasn't that the one with uh, George Hamilton? Yeah, I think vampire so. movie. Yeah, it is definitely a vampire built movie, but I I couldn't remember exactly. Yeah, yeah, it was from the late seventies, early eighties. Yeah. I think. Um, red buttons is in this movie. Yes, that red buttons. That red buttons. <laughs> playing Ben Andrews, and he's sort of a what is he's he? He's his promoter. He's a promoter, but he's kind of dirty. He's not the the best guy. Well, he he's the promoter, but he's he's kind of shady and yeah. he, you know, grifts a little money or not grifts, but he skims a little money off the top. Yeah, you know, and and evil calls him out on it. Yeah, and, you know, things like that. But like a lot of people, it's it in in evil can evil's little circle. Everybody kisses up to him. Yeah, and whenever he says, "Well, then hit the road," they're like, "Oh no, no, yeah. that's not what yeah. I meant, Mister Can Evil, sir." You yeah. know, and yeah. so it's a little a little sad <laughs> yeah red buttons he's you know famous stand-up comic um he was in the poseidon adventure adventure and, yeah. and other movies i think but... everybody was in the poseidon yeah adventure. that's true um and then you have leslie nilson yep yep that that leslie one nilson. um playing stanley millard and it's kind of funny um i mean i leslie nilson's been in tons of movies but when i was younger i knew him from airplane the yeah. naked gun so i always saw him doing funny you know comedy movies um, but he had been in a lot of, you know, obviously he started out as a serious actor yeah. and he was in the forbidden planet, which is a great sci-fi mm -hmm. movie. Um, and like I said, the airplane and the naked gun, but it's just, it's weird these days to see Leslie Nelson not being funny because yeah. in like airplane and all that, he's, he's not playing a comedian. He's playing a he, serious he's, guy. He's playing deadpan. Yeah. So you watch any of his movies where he's serious and you, you expect that it's supposed to be funny. You yeah, kind of laugh. Keep, you keep waiting for me, you know, don't call me Shirley or yeah, something, yeah. you know. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that um, came up many times in this viewing. <laughs> yep. Um, Dabney Coleman. Yep. That one. That Dabney Coleman. Um, of Cloak and Dagger fame in my mind. But that's what I always think of him from. Cloak and Dagger and uh, 9 to 5. 9 to 5, yeah. And he was, he was, he's a very well-known actor. Yeah. He's even well-known. Well, I think after this movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's been in so. tons and tons of stuff. Um, he plays a guy named Ralph Thompson, who is a, I was starting to fall asleep during this. He's he, medical, like a, he runs a psych, uh, uh, sanitarium in yeah. Mexico. Yeah. In, well, I'm sorry. In air quotes, Mexico. In, in quote unquote Mexico. Cause you know. Dabney Coleman looks very, very Mexican. Yeah, very is. Well, the last name like Thompson. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a, a Spanish surname. Yeah, typical. <laughs> um, then you have, don't forget about <laughs> Gene Kelly plays Will Atkins, the drunk uh, absentee father. Well, here comes the son, Tommy, Tommy Abkin, Atkins. Tommy Atkins. Yeah, played by a guy named Eric Olson. And, and well, uh, in this, a kid named Eric kid, Olson. Yeah, but he has the man voice. He's like this little. He's supposed to be ten. Ten. But he's but he clearly has gone through the voice change thing. I hope. It, or or they just dubbed in maybe somebody else's voice because his voice is very deep, you yeah. know, for his age. You, you see this the first shot you see him is you know the mechanics working on the motorcycle and then kind of through the forks <laughs> of the motorcycle you see this little you see, you see Angus, Angus Young from AC DC. from ACDC walk out. But nope, it's not actually him. It's just. Tommy Atkins wearing it, a costume. It just would have been perfect if Back in Black starts playing yeah. right there. Oh, we should do a mix like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so he walks up and he goes, "Dad," but but it's this little you know like ten year old. Although I I'm pretty sure the kid the actor is actually older than ten. Probably, well, but well, he, I say ten because um, they say that his he, mom died yeah ten died years ten ago years ago in yeah childbirth yeah so that's but yeah the kid could have he, very well been yeah he looks older than ten to me. Um, but there's a lot of funniness with him. Eric Olson, he's a kid actor, or at least was most known as a kid actor <laughs> in the 70s. Um, 
Swiss Family Robinson was kind of his top credit that I saw. Um, and then I already mentioned Marjo Gortner, but he's kind of, we were just discussing this. He's listed last, I think, in the credits in when the you're credits, watching the movie. Yeah, yeah. But it's one of those also and starring. starring yeah. yeah. So it's not like, it's not trying to say like he's barely in it, you know, less than like man in uniform in the back of the room. Yeah, it's like they list everybody and then you get the, and also starring. Yeah. So he gets a starring credit, yeah. but it's, I guess it gives him a little more yeah. oomph. I you just, know. it's like out of the, you're like, oh, all these boring people, boring people. Oh, wait, Marja Gordon. And Marja Gordner. But yeah, and he's, I mean, he's clearly more a star than, for example, the nurse or the. Well, he plays a much bigger part yeah, than he, he's Governor in Garcia. Yeah, yeah. He's in it quite a bit. So um, anyway. Um, so yeah. Um, so let's get into maybe kind of the, I'm going to read just the basic plot of the movie. Um, and like we always say, these descriptions never quite do it, but they at least give us a starting point. I yeah, think. yeah. So um, as the legendary stuntman travels to Mexico, speak, this is speaking of evil can evil of course to prepare for one of his greatest stunts yet he takes time out of his schedule to meet his fans helping out lonely orphans and trying to get his alpha alcoholic mechanic i can't say that <laughs> word alcoholic really have I? a lot of trouble with that word um his alcoholic mechanic to reconcile with his son while all this is going on evil's main rival is plotting to have evil killed and then get rich by using the team evil 18 wheeler to smuggle cocaine into America. The team evil. Team evil. I wow. Want, I want that on my car. Yeah. <laughs> That's my nice. little Corolla. I want team evil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're a small team right now. <laughs> but I actually, that, that plot description kind of does it. Although the whole cocaine thing to me, I get the movie itself kind of dazzles me away from what's actually going on. I'm just watching stunts and, and Gortner be, and be evil, evil. Tommy talking like a man <laughs> and all that. But yeah, there is a, like a drug smuggling type of backstory in there also. And, it, and it's a very, we were talking about this. It's a very seventies. It looks very seventies. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it looks like an, an episode of chips Yep. and cause you've got all these different stories going on and yep. then the, the drug, you know, the cocaine smuggling, angle to it and it yeah. just you expect Ponch and john to come out kind at some point save the day but you when you got evil can evil you know yeah, you he's, he's gotta that. save the yeah. day yeah and uh yeah that i kept thinking the same thing that it looks like chips and then at the end of chips remember they'd always do like like you said there's several stories in chips there'd always be like the the goofy like grossman and Ponch or goofing off with each yeah. other they're mad at each other that's the goofy story then there's the semi-serious story and then there's the hard-hitting story there's usually three y yeah stories going on and at the end of course it's a happy ending every time and they'd always freeze frame yeah with like with everyone them, laughing, laughing. Or something. Yeah. yeah and this one though would freeze frame with evil landing, landing jump. Which, which i was glad i was like i was gonna say like oh i wish this had ended with which, the freeze frame and it kind of did it's the only jump he lands in the entire movie yeah it's the only time he successfully really lands bad a jump. at this yes <laughs> definitely <laughs> so yeah this movie is really really entertaining um there's just it's just a fun movie to watch but there's just so much to make fun of and laugh at during there, the movie and not even laugh at though but just laugh with i mean yeah we grew up when evil Knievel was was at his uh yeah. his peak powers yeah uh, we were talking about it. it when wide world of sports came on i I didn't really care about sports. Yeah. But it, every Saturday when it would come on, it was like, oh, come on, Evil can Evil, yeah. Evil can Evil. And when it was, it was awesome. Yeah. And when it wasn't, it was like, oh, it's ice skating. Yeah. You know, and, and sad. Yeah. He was almost like, and, and this movie kind of plays into that. Like growing up, I knew there were no such thing as superheroes. But and I collected was. comic books, but he was <laughs> almost as close as you could get to like a real life superhero. Yeah. Even though he wasn't going around saving the day, he was doing something that was like, superhuman sort of yeah like it probably it really wasn't but it well seemed like and it he took it. you know he had the flashy outfit yeah and the, he's dressed up in a costume basically yeah and you know he had all the the vehicles were all you know yeah color coded you know with the the same red white and blue yeah you know motif and everything yeah and so yeah it was it was like having a, a superhero yeah so yeah uh evil can evil sort of 
at least if you grew up around the time we did, you, you, you had to know of him and probably looked up to him. Although, <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I was going to say, we don't need to get into it that ton, but that much. But in, in real life, Evil Knievel had a lot of He wasn't really conflict. a super nice guy. Not the nicest guy. <laughs> Although I will say, I watched a, a fairly recent documentary called, I think it's called Being Evil. Mm-hmm. And he's, I can't remember if he's, he's passed away now, but I can't remember if in the movie he's, it's after he's passed away or maybe they're filming it when he's kind of getting close to the end, but mm-hmm. it looks like he turned his life around quite a bit at the end. I understand. Yeah, he did. I think he, you know, became born again and, and yeah. really, you know, he felt of, really bad for a lot of the, the way he treated yeah. people. And of all things to go out, you know, of all the accidents he had, he goes out, his liver blows out. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he does all these stunts, but then he dies of something, you know, from probably drinking too much. Oh or yeah, definitely from drinking too much. Yeah. So, but anyway, kind of a, a good, bad, or bad, good story with Evil Knievel in, in real life. But yeah. in this movie, he's pretty much plays the superhero. Yeah. Um, and even though it, he plays the superhero, but he's kind of a jerk in some parts. Yeah. I mean... That money part towards it, the beginning, right? Yeah, with with uh, uh, Ben Andrews, with his, his uh, promoter. And it's almost like he's like a mob boss. Yeah. And, and Ben's, you know, going, oh, hey, I got you your money. And he... You know, yeah. throws the money and he's like, what about the money you owe me for this? Yeah. You know, oh, oh, well, well, you know, then get out. Oh, no, 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 boss, no, you know. Yeah. And, I, and, and I mean, Evil Knievel has got more money than he knew what to do with him. Yeah. He's like putting his hand out and, you know, come on, more, keep it more, coming, more. keep it coming, yeah. you know. I almost wonder, like, just the attitude, you know, and this is kind of in the middle of um, Evil Knievel's like he was at a pretty dark place in real life mm-hmm. from what from what I understand. I almost wonder, like I don't know how much he influence he had on the story or the dialogue, but I'm almost thinking a guy like Evil Knievel in his mind, a scene like that, he's probably the good guy. He's like, that guy wouldn't yeah. give me my money. Yeah. And he doesn't see how that kind of plays off, you know, to his audience, which is probably mostly kids, as sort of yeah. like, okay, well yeah, is money the most important thing? Well, and know? it kind of had a weird yeah, not reflection. Just a weird thing happened later, a few months after the film yeah, was released, yeah. when he attacked a promoter, uh, Shelly Saltman, a with baseball a baseball bat, aluminum baseball yeah. bat, which resulted in him losing his sponsorships, yeah. marketing, and going to prison yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, and it it really tarnished his image. I mean, I don't remember that. I don't either. But yeah, I do remember. All of a sudden, you know, the eighties. You just you never never really heard of him again yeah, yeah but yeah you've got that scene where he's you know telling his his promoter yeah you know pay up and then you know, in real life he goes after a promoter <laughs> yeah yeah um let's see here well let's let's talk maybe talk about a few fun scenes that we like the movie yeah 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 um and since it's um marjo madness time um, let's focus on him a little bit just because that's kind of the theme, even though evil's in this, let's talk about Marjo a little bit. He's well, and he did pl- have a big part in the movie. Yeah. He's, he's, I don't know if he's, he's obviously not the star of the movie, but he's, you know, second or third, probably as far as he, he's sort of the rival of evil Knievel, but not in a malicious way. Although it kind of turns. It's a friendly rivalry. Yeah. They're, they're definitely good friends. They're goofing off he, together. Well, he started, I guess from what the movie says is evil gave him his start in stunt right in stunt yeah. writing and then he got a better deal and he went off on his own yeah. and evil can evil just kind of you know well whatever you yeah. know but will is the one that that is still upset with him yeah for he kind of got felt betrayed or something like yeah that. and so he's not he's not the heel he's not the bad guy yeah but he inadvertently helps yeah he helps the bad guys um and it's kind of hard to say um how much he knows kind of what's going on but i don't think he knows how bad it is like what what the end goal is sort of i don't know he didn't because um remember he gets sent off he you know he's basically used as the as the go-between to try and get yeah evil to well okay we need to back up a little bit yeah the the bad guy plot leslie nielsen's plot is that they're gonna get evil knievel killed and then bring his body back but they've totally made a, a complete 100 percent replica of his uh yeah. his trailer his uh trailer with all his equipment and everything yeah. in it and 
in order to you know get him to Mexico to do this, they yeah. try to you know give him some money to 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 go down there and do it. Yeah, and they use the fact that Jesse and Evil are you know still friends. Yeah, to try to do that, and Jesse doesn't find out he's being used until right before spoiler alert he yeah, dies he dies um he walks in and of course they don't hear him but basically they say he's a junkie and we'll get rid of him as soon as yeah we're done they're just they're, using him yeah because they're gonna because they're gonna use you know bring evil's body back up and use that to smuggle the cocaine in yeah and you know the, you can see he, and what i don't understand was he trying to save evil yeah or was he just going well i'm gonna show them i'm i'm not a, a junkie i don't think he knew yeah i don't know i d did he i thought he didn't know that there was going to be a crash no because he drove well, away before they no he told them he told when he goes and confronts evil can evil in the in the, in the launch room yeah oh yeah yeah he says they're trying to kill you and they're gonna yeah. bring your body back up but how did he know that because he had remember when they when they tested out the little explosion the, that makes him yeah crash? he was gone he was gone and it was pointed out that yeah but i think he walked in maybe he heard part much, of that yeah i think well because he walked in and they said he's a junkie we'll get rid of him but I you know, can't remember how much they said about, you know, maybe after we've just, killed Evil evil. Maybe he didn't know how they were going to kill him, but just thought they're going to try to, obviously they're going to try to kill him right now. So he basically switches clothing with Evil Knievel and does the, <laughs> Which tries really to do funny. the, yeah, because <laughs> they, they have completely different body types. But he, he does the stunt instead of Evil Knievel, the whole audience, everyone thinks it's Evil Knievel. Yeah. Again, spoiler alert, he crashes and dies. But my thought is just maybe Marjo which I don't care what his character's yeah. name is. His name is Marjo. <laughs> he, he knows one way or the other they're going to try to kill him. So he's going to maybe make up for the peace he had in this whole plan yeah, I think, for his friend. I think it'd be taken either way. It's yeah. either he he's trying to protect Evil Knievel from that or yeah. he is like, well, I'm going to show them. Yeah. I'm not just a it junkie. Could, it could be that to. too. Yeah. yeah. Because he's like, I'm, I'm the one who's going to make that jump. Yeah. And yeah. so I don't, it, it really is kind of not clear. Yeah, it's not real clear. Either way, though, he's definitely not a bad guy. He he was involved with the bad guys and kind of didn't know it and then tries to make up for whatever part he well, had and, of that. Well, and he is an, an addict, a junkie. And, yeah. And they, Leslie Nielsen's um, people use that against him. Yeah. And so, the, you know, it's easy to keep him on a tether if they keep That's doing true. cocaine. So, yeah. So, yeah, he is... It, it, yeah, like I said, it may well be he's trying to redeem himself, or he's just going. Well, I'm going to show yeah. that. So, um, so let's see what else. Uh, let me let's check the time here. Is it about time for a, a break? I think it might be. Uh, well, uh, a couple more minutes. Let me let me say a couple things about Marjo before we go to our break. Um, <clears throat> well, if you listen to our previous episode, which was also part of Marjo Madness, um, I said a lot of things, but one thing I didn't say, I think, because I was so excited to say it that that was the one thing that slipped my mind <laughs> was his weird name marjo um this is a may or may not be but most places you look you'll you'll see that he was named after a combination of mary and joseph so you got from mar and yeah. joe from the bible um parents of jesus or the the mom and stepdad of jesus yeah basically <laughs> um but we, when you look into this, if you look more and more, you'll find some sources saying, no, that's not actually true. But can you yeah, explain? His, well, I know in one place I found um, it, and I cannot think of where it was. Yeah. But they, his father's name was Vernon. And his siblings, I think his mother had Joe somewhere in her yeah. name. She may have been Josephine or something like that. Um, but all of the kids had J-O-E. Yeah. And their it name. was some combination of of the parents' names. So his brother's name was Vernjo. Yeah. Or Virjo or something like something close like that. So <laughs> it's I've heard the Mary and Joseph thing is true and I've heard it's not. Yeah. It's so you don't well, know. Even true or not, it's just an interesting another little, interesting little piece of his life. Yeah. So um well, why don't we take a quick break and then we'll talk about a couple more We'll find some more Marjo moments. Marjo moments, yeah. Of that's, course, talk about evil. Knievel. Yeah, evil can evil, but we got to focus a little bit on Marjo too. Yeah. So, all right, it's well, his month. 
Yes, it is his month. It's, we'll do an Evil Knievel month there someday, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, we'll be right back with a little more of uh, Viva Knievel. Be right back. Viva! Viva! We're back, um, back to Viva Knievel. And we actually just discussed during our break, um, with movies like this, sometimes, at least for me, I'm so entertained that I start forgetting plot points and specifics of like, then this happened, then this happened. Yeah, yeah. So we were thinking with Marjo's character, he actually did do one thing in the movie that, that shows that he did know something bad he, was yeah. going on. He, he drugged the, the mechanic. He drugged Will. Will. And took photos of the inside of the, what do they call it? The 18-wheeler. Yeah, the 18-wheeler trailer. Whatever, whatever yeah. the name of it is. And so he he did have some quote-unquote evil He knew what He knew he what did. they were doing there. Yeah, at I least I still don't know portion. if he knew that they were going to try and kill yeah. Evil Knievel, but... I doubt that because he clearly liked Evil Knievel. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was friends with him and so stuff. So I, I think he probably just... Like we said, he was a drug addict. Yeah, and they were using that and they were to using their that advantage. Against them, yeah. Yeah. So not not a perfect character, but definitely not a bad guy. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So as uh, for the rest of the movie, uh, yeah. So obviously, we, Evil Knievel does not die. Um, in his place, Marjo's character does die, and in, then in Wembley Stadium. In Wembley <laughs> Stadium, yeah. So <laughs> supposedly they're in Mexico, but they're not. But <laughs> they're when, in L.A. They're in Los Angeles, <laughs> but when. Um, Marjo crashes unsuccessfully. He lands. Lands on. Doesn't land on this jump. Well, because because the bad guys blow out the tire. They blow out a tire. They have some sort of remote thing that blows out the tire at a key moment, or they can push a button or something. And yeah. It blows out the tire. Cause you, so actually, Marjo probably could have made the jump. You, yeah. Because he's, yeah. he's a jumper. He's not. You know. Just yeah. He some was. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. He was. So a he, contemporary of, of yeah. Evil and Evil. So. So yeah, and and then of course. That doesn't work, or it, it does work. Marjo dies, but then they realize, like, wait a minute, that's not Evil Knievel. And then. And so they're like, we got to boogie out. We got to get out of here. And at the same time, Evil Knievel kind of figures that out, and he puts on some it's non. It's just a, a worker. A worker a, outfit. You know, a worker jumper. Just to kind of look so that it doesn't look like it's Evil Knievel, I guess. Yeah. So one thing I really loved is you got this alcoholic mechanic. I said it. I said the word. Hey! Um, mechanic who's sort of at a bad point in his life. And what's kind of neat is they go after the bad guys, both Evil Knievel and him, you know, mm -hmm. Evil Knievel maybe grew up looking up, up to this guy. Yeah. And, but he's back on a motorcycle and you know, it's clearly, it's not actually Gene Kelly driving the motorcycle <laughs> sure? around, but it's kind of neat for the character to see like, Oh, he's back on a bike and he's, you know, kind of even though he's totally whiffed it at the end. <laughs> yeah. So they, they chase after, um, there's one, there's Leslie Nelson and the other guy who I can't remember his name. Uh, they're in a Porsche. Yeah. And they're kind of following. Are they in front they're, or behind? They're behind the rig. They're behind the 18 wheeler. So they're just trying to get out of there. And in the 18 wheeler, you've got another wormy dude. And another, another guy. Bad guy. And, and then the other bad guy. So yeah, <laughs> bad guys. So they're driving. And then you got these two motorcycle guys, Evil, or Evil Knievel and, and, the, Will. and Will chasing after him. So you got, um, it's kind of neat just seeing them ride together. There's, and this is maybe a good, it's a little bit trivia, but maybe the good part to bring up that in this movie, um, the stunts were not all done by Evil by Knievel. Evil, yeah. And we were thinking like, okay, yeah, maybe he could have done some of this stuff. Maybe, maybe not. But in this situation, he's the star of a movie. And you, if you something don't want, happened to yeah. him, you've got production, you, you've just shot your production. Yeah. So, so, I mean, he was more an actor in this movie than, yeah. than a motorcycle he did, guy. He did, you know, all his little wheelies and stuff like yeah. that, but some of the really dangerous jumps, yeah. probably the main, you know, the over-the-line pit and, yeah. and stuff yeah. like that were probably the the uh, extra, the uh, Gary Charles Davis, according to yeah. the interwebs. 
Yeah. Um, he was a professional stuntman. So. so yeah, you've got stock footage throughout. Like when, when Marjo crashes, that's actually footage from Evil Knievel actually crashing in Wembley, uh, Wembley, Wembley Stadium. Stadium. Yeah. So you got like... That was a gnarly crash. That was. <laughs> um, and then at the end, though, you've got clearly two stunt riders, not really Gene Kelly and Evil Knievel, driving around, taking yeah. tight corners. I think this, the film was sped up a little bit. I saw some leaves blowing at some point too oh. fast, and you're like, okay, that's sped up film. But still dangerous stuff i mean it's well, not and then there was when he when uh, evil jumped off the uh, the top of the tunnel onto the, tunnel, the top, onto of, the the top rig. of a rig yeah yeah and so it's uh, kind of thinking that wasn't him <laughs> yeah that wasn't him but um just sort of some neat action i'm just glad um i always forget will right yes see i just forgot <laughs> he he kind of takes on the porsche at first and evil can evil supposed to take on the the rig the rig and so you see will's side of it first he ends up falling off this cliff and I always I always think when I see that, oh he died. That's kinda sad. He's never gets to kinda reconcile with reconcile his son, with his son yeah. and all that. But he actually doesn't. He he ends up being okay, just kinda beat kinda. up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly. Um, and then Evil Knievel takes on actually Evil Knievel kinda ends up taking out the Porsche and the, the big rig, right? Uh let's see, he takes out the rig as he pulls the, the brakes on the trailer. Yeah. And it causes the rig to slide. Then he throws well the the rig sliding around throws the one bad guy off yeah and then the driver evil can evil pulls out and pummels and then throws in the back yeah and then the yes yeah the yeah. porsche they like, chases him yeah they go off a hill or actually a little tiny toy porsche goes off <laughs> a little tiny hill and, and leslie nielsen and the other guy go ah, ah and then there's a the death fall. star explosion yeah he's superimposed <laughs> over the porsche because that's what porsches do when yeah they... they death star explode yeah <laughs> Um, and then of course, you know, the son, the son and the father get back together. Um, they, they hug and, and evil and, and Lauren, hug. Lauren hug and kiss. And yeah. Smooch and, so everyone's happy. Yeah. Except for Marjo, who's dead. Yeah. Marjo's and, dead. That's kind of Leslie Nielsen and the other bad guys who are all probably yeah. dead. Yeah. And, and then he makes his jump Yep. and we get the and evil the freeze Knievel frame song. and the evil Knievel song, which I don't think we talked about that yet. Oh. It's an amazing song. Although I got to say, um, you know, of course, this is a podcast and we edit this afterwards. So you have heard the song because I just played it during the uh, hey. break. So, yes, you have heard it. This time travel thing. Is hard. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the greatest songs I was I was mentioning to Jay earlier that, you know, I've seen this movie five somewhere between five and ten times, probably. And the song is so catchy that. You may not know every single word to it, all the lyrics, but but from the first time I saw this movie until now, at, at a moment's notice, <laughs> ask me what the Viva Knievel song is, and I can start singing it. Like there's, it's like like I said, it's like Happy Birthday. I don't have to what, think like what's the Viva that, Knievel song? How does that song go? What's Viva the Viva, Viva Knievel. We yeah. don't we don't have the female backup singers yeah. to do that. Viva. <laughs> but yeah, it's a extremely catchy song. Uh, it goes perfectly with the movie because the movie is just really bright, colorful. It is. And it's fun. It's again. It's like an episode of a TV, <clears throat> '70s TV show, yeah. and yeah. it's just fun. And you know, and it's there's not really. There, I don't think there's really any language. No, not much, and... except for one thing. <laughs> and let me, you know, <laughs> yes, there's... there's one word, but I would I would like to take time out before we go on to maybe the trivia of the movie. I just like to say that. I go to Indianapolis every year to see the Indy 500. I go there with friends to drive and race. Every year when I go there, they go there to qualify. They usually go, have to go as fast as possible to get in front road position. They put nitro in their cars sometimes instead of the fuel that is intended to be in the car so that the cars will go faster. And they do for about five to 10 laps. Then they blow all to hell. <laughs> and you people, you kids, <laughs> If you put nitro in your bodies in the form of narcotics so that you can do better or so that maybe you think you can do better, you will for about five to ten years and then you'll blow all to hell. And, and the blow yeah. is exactly how it's said. <laughs> and then you'll blow all to hell. So that's um, that's a speech Evil Knievel gives before his yes, jump. Yes, the probably drunk and coked up Evil Knievel. Telling you not to do narcotics. <laughs> but yeah, as far as language, I think the only language is probably him saying hell, which isn't necessarily that strong of a word. But, yeah, yeah. But it, yeah. It's, it's, 
you could watch this with your kids if they wouldn't be totally bored. Silly yeah, by and it. they but, might be, you know, but if it, they don't know who Evil Knievel is, which yeah, they probably don't. Yeah, probably don't. Um, but yeah, so hilarious speech. Um, the movie is bright and colorful and clear, and I used to have, you know, him, this blow to hell speech that I just quoted. Um, that used to be the background of my computer, like the... <laughs> wallpaper so i think it needs to be at my at work yeah i think i'm gonna put it back to mine <laughs> uh, at work too but anyway so it's a super fun movie let's get to a, a few bits of trivia and then some more personal evil yeah, evil yeah. stuff um so i kind of mentioned as we were talking about the director when the, when we first started this this episode um apparently gordon douglas actually didn't direct most of this movie it was about 80 percent directed by a guy named Irwin Allen, mm -hmm. who was a successful TV producer. He did some sort of 60s sci-fi TV, like The Time Tunnel and Lost in Space, and a lot of other stuff. And his wife. And his in wife. In the movie as Sister Charity. Yes. She's a nun towards the beginning of the movie. Uh, Evil Knievel visits this orphanage, and she's there. Yeah, she chastises him, and then he gives her some chocolate, and yeah. then she's happy. Yep. <laughs> um, because of women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And as we, as we mentioned, you know, the actual stunts in the movie, for the most part, were done by another professional stuntman named Gary Lee Davis. Um, and again, I didn't read this right, outright, but my assumption is if your star of the movie is a stuntman, you maybe don't want him doing all the stunts because he still needs to be in the movie. Yeah, it's like a, a more recent, I guess Tom Cruise does a lot of his. Yeah. And some of the stunt people you know the the groups the organizations are a little peeved at that because they're like well a it puts us out of work yeah and b we know what we're doing and if you get hurt mr cruz the movie's over then yeah then the movie's put on hold uh, production's put on hold all these people are out of work yeah you know while you're getting better so let us do our job yeah you know? yeah and that was probably the the deal with this because yeah one thing evil can was known for was crashing and getting hurt. He broken getting, like every bone in his body. I yes, his claim was I've broken every bone in my body. Yeah. So there's that. Um, and then actually, I guess the other piece of trivia I brought up, I actually sort of already mentioned that on accident, which was, yeah. um, you know, when jump. when yeah when the failed jump at the end of the movie by Marjo is actually stock footage of a real crash of Evil Knievel, which works out because Marjo was wearing Evil's clothing, which makes me wonder. What happened for the chicken or the egg thing? What happened first? Did they, did they have Jesse Marjo change into Evil's clothing and then think like, well, we need a crash of somebody wearing that clothing? Oh, we do. Every time Evil can Evil crashes, we have footage of that. I, or I, was it the other way around? Yeah, I would think that they because I noticed it was very jarring because the whole first part of the movie up until they go to Mexico, he's wearing his white um, yeah. Elvis outfit. Yeah, and. It, you know, the star spangled, but bright, bright white. And then all of a sudden he comes around a corner and he's in his dark blue yeah. outfit, his leathers. And it's, it's the same outfit that he wore at the Wembley crash. Yeah. So yeah. I think they probably said kind of, kind of like a lot of these movies, these B yeah. movies that we watch, they go, I've got the arm from a dummy yeah. and a, a 73 cutlass and access to the college boiler room after yeah. hours. Let's make a movie. About that, yeah. <laughs> and so I think it was kind of like, hey, we've got this footage. We we need a good crash. Yeah. You know, a, a good crash scene. That's a we great crash. Don't want to recreate a crash. Yeah. We already got video. So you have to look like yeah. what already exists in this So footage. we have to make a reason that you're wearing the blue leathers. Yeah. And that would make sense to me. Yeah, that's true. And the uh, speaking of the clothing, one funny thing is that Marjo is sort of thin, muscular but thin, and kind of tall, whereas Evil Knievel is more maybe average height, and he's a little bit older, and, and, and not doughy, a little bit doughy. <laughs> so it's it's funny they you know they switch clothing. It's like how in the world would that fit that guy? I know. That, how did he not come out and it's like you know high water yeah, and yeah. like super loose around his waist? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was sort of funny. I mean, because they're not similar in size so nowhere near the same yes yeah. <laughs> so a little personal stuff i mean like we said we both grew up looking and watching evil knievel and kind of thinking highly of him did yeah, you have any there, toys there was an abundance of toys i remember yeah um the one th uh the, the two that i do know for certain that i had and i remember 
and I really want to get one of them again yeah. when I can find it. I had the the stunt cycle yeah. that you you revved yeah. up. You you would put the motorcycle on this little launcher and you'd rev it up super fast. Yeah. And I can't remember how it launched if it just got up to a certain speed yeah, was or if it, there was a button. I think there must have been a release. I think there must have been a button. Yeah. So yeah, you basically crank this thing and it goes like kind of like that. Yeah. And then I think you push it, the button and then the motorcycle would take off. Yeah. And usually it would take off and it would make a wheelie and then it would follow. And it would crash. Yeah. Kind of like the really old Yeah, pretty much. It was <laughs> very accurate. And then you could do stuff like they had ramps and stuff. You could make them jump. Yeah. What I... <laughs> this started my long love of stress testing toys and yeah. things um, up to and include, I would make Lego cars and ships and then like push them off the bed to see yeah. and then study how, how well they stayed together. Ah. I would take Evil Knievel and when I got bored with him going across the kitchen floor and falling over, I would rev up the motorcycle as fast as I could, take him out back and run him into a wall yeah. and just watch him go boom and fly off the motorcycle. Good. <laughs> that was that was I loved doing that. Yeah. I had the cycle. Um, I don't have very specific memories of it, but I do remember having it. And did you say you had one other one? Well, or? I had another one that wasn't, to, to my recollection, it wasn't Evil Knievel. Oh, uh, okay. Branded. Everybody had a big wheel yeah. back in the uh, 70s, yeah. and they still do. Um, for some reason, I never had an actual name big wheel. Oh. But I had what I called the chopper, and it was red, white, and blue. It had a white seat, a yeah. big white seat, and it wasn't adjustable like the big wheel. Yeah. But it had a big front tire and then, um, you know, the, the smaller plastic tires in the back. Yeah. And mine didn't have the, the little um, brake brake thing, thing that you yeah. would pull, the, the, the spin-out brake. Yeah. So I had to learn how to do that on my own. Yeah. But everybody else had big wheels, and I had what I called the chopper. And yeah. it reminded me of Evil Knievel because it was red, white, and blue. Yeah. And it was just, it was so awesome. I loved that. So thing. yeah, whether it was really evil Knievel type thing or not, it to the you influence was, was there. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I only had the, the little, uh, rev up motorcycle thing, but one thing I can say, which actually brings back to chips is, um, when I was in kind of junior high and then up into through high school, I rode, uh, dirt bikes, like motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And I, now that I think back, I know that what influenced me as a kid was probably evil can evil made me interested in motorcycles. Yeah, I didn't not do dying. stunts. Yeah, not in dying. <laughs> uh, and then I remember Chips thinking like, "Oh, that'd be so neat to be a motorcycle cop, to be on a motorcycle." You so, know what's what's funny is watching this movie. It made me want to go yeah, get a motorcycle and just go out and just just you for know, fun, have right? fun. Yeah, if nothing else, than just like a little mini bike, just something like that. Yeah, just go out and that'd dirt. be fun. Because I. I never had motorcycles or motorbikes. Yeah. I had my own uh, BMX bike. Yeah. And I would go and I would jump that thing and yeah. I'd race it and do all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, I can that for those of us that grew up in the 70s and 80s, even if Evil Knievel wasn't there all the time, we were still going yeah. out there and racing and jumping. And I mean, I remember a kid when I, at the place I lived in the 70s, <laughs> his kid across the street set up a ramp and uh. did the, the, lay down in front of the oh, ramp yeah, yeah. and so me and i think a couple other kids laid down and he jumped over us and, and made it thank goodness <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah there was very much an influence I and mean, there there were still there were other toys i know that we i didn't have but i mean like hot wheels had yeah you know replicas of the of the rocket car um there was more in the uh to go along with the motorcycle there was a scramble van and I think the jet car and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Different things you could put on the launcher. So yeah. there was a whole lot of stuff, but it did kind of inspire us all to do yeah. really, really dumb. Yeah, that's jumps. true. <laughs> I was thinking if that guy had not made the jump and it had landed on you, then then this is what this podcast would sound like. Welcome to the bomb shelter. I'm your host, Kevin Shum. And then I just keep talking because there would be no Jay McDowell because yeah, the guy, that fun. stupid kid landed on him. Well, I can, I'll try and tell it as quick as I can. Okay. I do have my, my near death evil can evil experience. Okay. Again, I rode a bike all the time yeah. and my friends all rode skateboard. They're all skate rats. Yeah. And I just, I don't have the coordination for yeah. skateboard. So they would set up a launch ramp and this launch ramp they'd set up, they'd set up on the curb, put a cinder block and then put this rotted old piece of plywood on it. Yeah. When they would jump, they oh, would yeah. jump, and it would go into the grass. 
and they would just be and but when they would hit the plywood would bend and yeah. it would launch them a little more in an upward arc yeah so they <laughs> Bike, go bikes way more than skateboards well yeah. they go hey why don't you jump it <laughs> and i'm like 13 or 14 i'm like sure okay so i go to the top of the street and this street had a little bit of a decline so i could get a lot of speed on it yeah i come flying down there flying 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 and boom i hit that and yeah the board bends and it sends me almost straight up oh no well <laughs> everything was fine until i met the mulberry tree oh from my waist up i was going through leaves and branches getting hit oh and i'm going through and everything goes in slow motion and then all of a sudden i hear he's gonna hit the wall oh, no. <laughs> in slow motion there was a cinder block wall oh. probably about 15 maybe yeah. 20 feet from the from the curb maybe only 10 but yeah i'm coming down and i hear that and i go oh no this is gonna hurt yeah real bad and so it was a bmx bike so i didn't have uh, the the pedal brakes i yeah. had just calipers yeah and i squeezed those as hard as i could and I'm coming down slow motion, and boom, I hit the ground, and everything all of a sudden goes normal speed. Yeah, yeah. And I hit, and I left probably two-inch indentions in the ground where my yeah. tires slid, and then my handlebars spun and caught my shirt. Ow. And the bike endos, and I just close my eyes because I see the wall coming. I close my eyes. I go, this is, this is uh, hopefully it'll be quick, and yeah, I'll just be yeah. dead. And I stop, <laughs> and I open my eyes, and I'm I'm not kidding you. I'm about two inches from the wall. Yeah. Facing the wall. <laughs> and I'm just like, ah. <laughs> and after that, I was the coolest kid on the block. Good. Nobody could ever top that stunt. That's pretty neat. <laughs> and if you had hit that wall, then welcome to the bomb shelter. I'm your host, Kevin Shum. <laughs> well, or it would have been welcome to the bomb shelter. I'm your host, Kevin Shum. I'm your host, yeah. it now. I, I volunteered down at a uh, hospital and. <laughs> There's for people who've had their noses shoved back yeah. in the face. <laughs> so, yeah, evil can evil is super influential to all yeah. kids. Our yeah, age to and... the detriment of our health. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Inspiring us to do really stupid things. Um, so, so, so there you have it. Yes, there you have it. Let's, um, you want to do a quick good and bad and ugly? Yeah, I mean, it's, it really, it's all good. It's me. all good. Yeah, that's, that's easy. Good. <laughs> the whole um, movie. It just... Yeah. It was fun. It's it was a fun time to grow up and it was it's fun just seeing all the not seeing people on a cell phone or not seeing yeah. people, you know. Granted, yes, I know this is online and this is you're probably might be listening on your cell yeah. phone, blah blah blah. But at that time we got out and we played and we had yeah. fun and we had hero superheroes like like Evil Can Evil. Yeah. And so it just it's such a fun movie. It's a joy to yeah, it's yeah. not just fun, it's a joy to watch that oh, movie. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he has hair that reminds me of my dad, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's all good for me, too. I, there's no bad. No there's way. no bad. I was going to say, there's no bad. The only thing like, bad I could say would be, there's sort of, but it's not bad. It's part of the story. The the father-son conflict there is kind of upsetting a little bit, but it's not bad because it ends up being good in the end. And, well, even that is just, it's very uh, after-school special yeah, level. Yeah, it definitely You is. know, oh, you sent me away. Well, you killed your mom. And, and then, you know, I dealt with it with alcoholism and then i got yeah. better because i realized i love my son blah 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 yeah you yeah. know so yeah and nothing bad or ugly for nothing me. bad or ugly yeah. let's just say it's all good i don't know if we've ever had an all good one have we i don't know so wait till we get I'm to so mac fine. and me then it's gonna be all bad <laughs> yeah i don't think there was anything all ugly. good all, all ugly yeah <laughs> there was not one single good thing in this movie um so so that does it i think that's it for for marjo madness, marjo madness 2018 yeah it's hard it feels bad uh we talked a little more about Evil Knievel than Marjo, but that's he's one of the few guys that can overshadow. Yeah. And and the movie was called Viva Knievel, so. Well, you know. and Marjo got his. Yeah, he, his, got, uh, he got, we talked about him, and yeah. he had his his previous episode. Yeah. So he's good. I think he was covered so, sufficiently. Yeah. So final thoughts, should, should you see this you movie? You should definitely see this right you, now. You should see it right now, and you should see it multiple times, especially yeah. if you were a child of the 70s. I haven't looked up recently how it's available, but I, I own it on DVD, and I don't know if there is a Blu-ray available, but the DVD looks so good, it might as well be a Blu-ray. Yeah, it looks perfect. yeah, it was really, really good and clear. Yeah, so, so uh, go out and watch it, find it, watch it, buy it, and if you enjoyed this, 
and would like to watch more, you can find us right where you found us here at YouTube Valley Lodge Productions. If you'd like to communicate with us, we're, we're willing and able and waiting for you to email us at valleylodgeproductions at gmail.com. There you go. And someday, eventually, we may be at places besides or an, in addition to YouTube, but uh, for, for right now, now, that's YouTube. where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for listening, and we'll hopefully talk to you next time. Have a good day. Viva! 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 Viva!